Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be solving day three of Advent of Code 2024 in BQN. As always, we are going to skip straight over the problem statement because it is way too involved. And this time we're gonna do something a little bit different. We are gonna solve this in VS Code because this problem is a lot more involved, at least if you don't have regex which we currently don't. But for the purposes of this video, we are not going to use regex. We are just gonna use BQM, but we're gonna make use of a bunch of helper functions that are in libraries that I've already written to make this a little bit easier. So the problem states that you are given a single string and you can see here on the screen, this is the string. And basically what we want to do is we want to pull out the valid multiplications which follow the pattern MUL, parentheses, integer, comma, integer, and parentheses. So you can see that there's a bunch of invalid multiplications. So we only want to basically strip out the valid ones, then perform them, and then add them up. And the trick to this is gonna be doing some tricky splitting. So I've seen several different types of solutions. The way that I solved this was the following. The first thing we're gonna do is we are going to split on the mole and the first parentheses. So if we do this, come back here, you can now see that we've split our string into substrings that have been delimited by the MUL parentheses. The next thing we want to do is we want to split again based on the right parentheses. So we're going to bind this to another split function and then we're gonna perform this over each of our strings in our list from the first split. So if we do this now, we've got a nested list where the inner lists are lists of strings that have been split based on that parentheses. And so now if we flatten this, and I think we're gonna need a nothing there because we're doing this tacitly, we're now gonna no longer have a nested list, we just have a list of strings that are going to include the comma separated integers that we want. And so now we just need to make sure that when we see a comma that there's only two integers there because we technically could have more than two integers. So figure out which ones are valid, convert those, multiply them, sum them up. So let's, because we're going to need this for part B, put this in a function, also called split, not in the namespace though, and put this back here, I actually call this split. So now we got that working. And now we're gonna build up a function called prod for product. Set that to the identity first. And if we do this, so currently it doesn't do anything, but now we're gonna build this up. So first thing we wanna do is we want to, once again, split based on the comma. So now if we do this, we are going to have split any of the pairs of integers or more integers or anything that has a comma in it, technically. And then we need to do two checks. The first check is, are there two strings in this list of strings that we've just split? So if we do this now, we're gonna have at least uh, a Boolean mask that matches only one comma being in the strings. But this is not enough to get the validity of things we need to multiply. The next thing we need to do, and we'll turn this into a fork, so we'll do our pair with identity trick to get the next thing we wanna do, is we want to check if these are valid integers, technically natural numbers, because there are no negative integers here, at least in the test case. And we have a is natural number, and now we just wanna check are both of them. So we want to do an logical and reduction. So now we have a pair of whether there is one comma and the split strings are both valid natural numbers. And you can see that some of them, both of those criteria are true, some of them, none of them, and some of them, only one of them. So the ones that both of them are true are the ones that we want to do the multiplication for. So we are going to replace this with technically a multiply would work, but actually I meant to type logical and there. And now with this fork, we can combine this with choose, which is going to basically say when the predicate or expression on the left evaluates true, uh, grab something from the first index 
And when false, grab something from the uh, second index, technically reverse, zeroth index and first index. So when it's false, we just want zero. When it is true, we want the multiplication reduction of the integers, which we can get by calling the system BQN function over our strings, which we know are valid integers now. So if I typed this correctly, we should now have all of the integers that we need to sum up, which means that the only thing we need to do in order to get this to work now is add a plus reduction with a nothing, and we now have part A working. So that wasn't too bad, but depending on how you solved part A, part B is going to be either easy or difficult. So part B, a little bit irritatingly, gives you a, a different test input. It's not typical for Advent of Code to do that. And you can see now that we've got these don'ts and do's. And basically, what you have to do here is ignore anything preceded by a don't that isn't, you know, turned on. So basically, this turns off some summing and the do turns back on something. So you're gonna end up with a mask that you could get by doing something like a scan that is gonna filter out some of the numbers that you summed up. And so this is where the splitting trick that we did at the beginning is gonna come in handy because based on the way that we split it, if we bring this up now, you'll note that because we split on the right parentheses after splitting on the mole, every time we encounter a don't or a do, it's going to be at the end of one of our substrings or our strings within our list. And we can take advantage of this property by the following. So this is going to be a little bit more of a verbose function. So we're going to split this onto multiple lines. We're going to call this S. And then basically we want to work our way up to a mask that we can apply to the list of integers that we're going to sum up. So when we turn things on, we are going to want to find the do, which we know should match if it is there, the last three, so a negative three take of our string, each of our strings in our list. So we need to each this over s. So if we come back here and we test this, you'll note that we have a single uh, one here, Boolean, representing the one do that we have. And we're basically gonna copy and paste this, call this off, add don't here, and then change this to six. And if we do this, we're gonna get another Boolean at the third index, which represents where we're turning things off. And so now if we go on minus off, we're gonna have a list of ones and negative ones that we can use to build up this mask. Your first assumption might be to do something like a not equal scan, but in this case, that's actually not gonna work because it's not guaranteed that the don'ts and do's just toggle one to one. You could have multiple don'ts and multiple do's in the same order or in a row, and that would mean the not equal scan trick wouldn't work. So what we have to do is, first thing we need to do is we need to add a one to the front, and then we want to do a scan that is going to be a plus scan. So it's basically adding negative one when you want to turn things off and adding one when you want to turn things on. But on top of this, we also need to make sure that we are uh, never going above one or below zero. Because if you have those multiple do's and don'ts in a row, it'll continue to go down. So you want to make sure that you just do this zero max, one min, and this scan should give you the mask that you want. And we need to make sure that we do the one drop to get the right length back. And if we call this mask, we can now just go mask times the prod of each of the S's. And you can see now that we've zeroed out a couple of the numbers that we need to sum up. So if we now do a plus reduction on this, we now have all of our test passing, AKA part A and part B. So this was pretty pretty neat, pretty tricky. The initial code that I had was a little bit longer. I initially wrote out the isNAT, which you can see is now in a library, because I wrote this for another Perl Weekly Challenge problem at one point. And I used a ternary expression with the question mark and semicolon before initially using choose here. 
And I think things weren't tacit initially for the first three functions. Anyways, hope you enjoyed. If you have an alternative solution, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow for day four.